we still do have a question from Julia, uh, who's joining us right now. Um, I want to become, and this is a doozy. This is a good one. I want to become a clinical herbalist. I just don't know the steps to getting to that point. You want to lay out the steps? Wow. I <laughs> wish it were that easy. Okay. Step one, pick up the machete. Step two, <laughs> start cutting through the brush. Find your way. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Totally. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I think, um, you know, step one for, for me would be, in my opinion, I mean, I think that there are many paths. Okay. First of all, I'm just going to caveat. There are many paths to becoming an herbalist and working one on one with clients from like through my lens, my worldview and my lens, I would suggest, or I would say, you know, the, the path that I took myself has been a successful one. Um, and so I can, I can offer up, you know, the idea of investing in an herbalism education that has a clinical focus. So maybe you've kind of already just done, like you've been doing intro. Um, maybe you've been, maybe you're focused on self-study um, and you really want to go through a self-study path and that's totally okay. But you want to start bringing in, you know, the anatomy, the physiology, the pathophysiology, how does the body work in health and disease? Um, really getting clear with medical sciences? What are your red flags? And then taking as many clinical programs or clinical classes as you can, if you, if you're not able to invest in an actual, like, you know, multiple year clinical program, um, I would, you know, definitely suggest, you know, once you get through or part, part way through, or even through the, the clinical program that you find yourself a really awesome mentor, um, someone who's actually working also with clients and that is going to be able to let you sit in on their clinic and vice versa, also potentially be able to show up, um, you know, for your clients, you know, especially if it's an online situation, so that you have some feedback when you start to work one on one with clients. Um, I definitely think that, um, you know, having a solid ground in medical sciences, and obviously your your mat med, your materia medica, um, and your energetics. Um, I, and, you know, your pharmacology and things like that is really like having that ground, that ground to stand on can launch you into actually getting that, those clinical hours and getting that experience, working with a mentor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I will say, you know, I know that not everybody feels like it's like the end all be all, um, going for the RH membership with the American Herbalist Guild. Um, but I feel like, not that it's the end all be all, but I, I find in particular that they have a really, really clearly laid out education path for what you could call yourself a clinical herbalist, you know, having finished that. And so I would definitely check out what the requirements are to apply for a registered herbalist membership with the American Herbalist Guild, because I think that will give you sort of like a framework for what you're kind of looking for. Um, from from my perspective, <laughs> from my lens. Um, and, you know, I will I will say this, too, you know, that the, the RH membership, um, you know, for me is a really special one, because not only does it represent sort of a standard of education, but I also really believe in this idea of, um, you know, my clients being able to hold me accountable to and me being able to hold myself accountable to something like a structure that is greater than myself. <laughs> Uh, in my own ruminations and my own business. And so, you know, what the RH membership does, you know, for me is there's a, there's a community there, but there's also, um, you know, a, a pretty strict code of ethics um, that, you know, I can adhere to and that I can also point my clients to and say, you know, Hey, if I, if I mess up or you feel like, you know, I've done something unethical, you can, you can call me out for that. You can complain to the American Herbalist Guild and they have a really, um, they have a, a really great, great intact grievance process, which, you know, again, I just think it's about accountability as well. So I kind of just went on like a whole tour right there. But I'll say that if you go to the our, um, the American Herbalist Guild website, which I know that they're currently working on, it's kind of a work in progress. Um, there's a there's a new website being worked on as we speak. 
um, that the RH sort of um, recommendations are going to be a really good sort of framework or guideline, I think, um, for kind of framing your, your herbal education to step into that clinical realm. Yeah. Yeah. So Julia says mentorship, like second step, I'm thinking Camille Freeman, she has something like that. So yeah, she does have a mentorship program, as does Erica. That's the herbal practice connection from what I can understand. But when I was taking the Columbine School of Botanical Studies, you know, I did the two-year apprenticeship where we would go out in the field and we'd, you know, we'd botanize and we'd learn herbalism and all of that. But then after the the apprenticeship, how he actually does have like the clinical uh, mentor. How important is it from your perspective, Erica, for someone to study with someone in person in the clinic with them side by side? And then um, I guess dovetailing off that, um, is your mentorship, the Herbal Practice Connection, kind of like a step beyond that? Or how do you see all that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like um, I feel like times times are changing. Yeah. And I think that you know, how we model herbal practice is also changing. There's no doubt value in sitting in somebody's clinic in person. I mean, the four years I spent with the Scottish School of Herbal Medicine, the University of Wales, I was in in clinic, in person with clients in the room um, and my supervisor in the room. Um, and that is just in an invaluable uh, experience. And so if you can find in-person clinical hours you know, I, you know, I would fly to the moon and back to, to get some of those under your belt. But I also feel like, um, you know, because the practice for me, the business of clinical herbal practice has changed. Uh, the role of the herbalist in people's lives is changing. And so, you know, with that, I feel like the online environment is also a really wonderful and successful and even intimate opportunity to sit in and get clinical hours. Um, my entire clinical practice is currently online and it is working out beautifully based on the way that I practice as an herbalist. Um, and so I'll just say that I've got two sort of, well, I've got three sort of mentorship. Um, let me just mute my emails. I've got three um, mentorship sort of opportunities and they they kind of scale. So um, the, the big one is the Clinical Foundations Mentorship, and this is something that's actually starting October 1st. I've got a, a full cohort this year. I only take on five students a year. Um, that's a six-month program, um, and in that six months, you are sitting in on the Ohio Free Herbal Clinic, um, which I run here out of Ohio. Um, and then I also sit in on, you're responsible for getting clients, and we use Sovereignty Herbs platform, and I also sit in on your consultations. Um, in addition, you get, you know, um, membership to the Herbal Practice Connection, where I do case reviews, we do workshops uh, surrounding clinical topics, there's specialty training surrounding clinical topics, we have group meetings, like we, I call them pep talks in there. Um, and so you, you, you get your, you get clinical hours, you get, you know, up to 50 clinical hours in that six months, it's pretty intense. Um, and um, it's enough to kind of start you on your path or to give you a chunk of time that you can then, you know, move into a program um, like Camille's or, you you know, Camille's program, uh, you finish her, you know, she does her mentorship Mondays. You could potentially do both. It depends on really what you're going for there. Um, the Ohio Free Herbal Clinic, sitting in on that clinic is really pretty hardcore. It's fully booked every month. And um, you actually get to sit in with students from um, the UK and uh, abroad because I also mentor for the National Institute of Medical Herbalists. And so it's a really rich clinical learning environment. Um, I have a lot of fun with that. I, I really enjoy it a lot. Um, and so so there is that uh, th those options. The second kind of mentorship that I offer is another six month program. Um, and that launches in March. And that's the business of clinical herbal practice, where we're focusing less on like the, the ins and outs of how to be a clinician and how to you know model your clinical work into, OK, how do you turn this into a business where you can actually make a living doing this work? Um, because I think, you know, sorry to burst everybody's bubble, but clinical practice is a business. Um, and there are lots of intricacies and irregularities and all kinds of things that um, you don't know, when, you don't know, because you don't know. Um, and so, so that la launches in March, and it's also sort of you get 
the Ergo Practice Connection membership with that as well. Um, so then, so then there's just the standalone Herbal Practice Connection, which is, you know, $34.99 a month and you get, you know, one really solid event a week, um, whether that's a pep talk um, with the group or um, a workshop, like it's kind of like a lecture class that I teach. Um, we all, I also do case review there. And then we get once a month, we get specialty trainers in to kind of do um, really great subjects. Like this month is Lindsay Feldposh and she's going to be doing herbal formulation. Um, and then next month is uh, Camille Freeman's coming in. She's doing um, a writing and thinking workshop. You know, how do we how do we write about our work in the world to really connect authentically with our clients? Um, and so, and then Steven Yeager is coming in in November. He's going to be teaching uh, CGMP for uh, dispensing herbalists. So things like that. And you get all of this for, you know, $34.99 a month. Plus you get this really awesome, supportive, loving, fabulous community of, of folks. So it's, it's quite a cool, like if you're not ready to commit to clinical hours, but you want to kind of keep your, keep your hand in the clinical world and you want to you know, collaborate with clinical people and you want to start thinking like a clinician, um, herbal practice connection is awesome. And I've got Sherry, Sherry's just in the, Sherry's one of my members and she's, oh, nice. she's really loving it. Yeah. I think, I mean, she's still there. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's here too. So she, she probably loves it. Uh, what a, <laughs> what a guest lineup. Yeah. Uh, I got to have Lindsay Feldposh on the show eventually. Oh my gosh. You, yeah. Nice to catch up with her at the Great Lakes Fair. Did you sip any of her potions? Yeah, she gave us some. Uh, I don't know, mimosa thing in the morning one one day, but yeah, it was it was delicious. Yeah, she's yeah, really she, good. Yeah, yeah. 